Good evening, everybody. We're having a nice fall evening here in Pittsburgh. Nice and cool. No rain. Cars are fine. All right. Okay, as we can see, they have had a hard time figuring out which way they, they meaning the market, has had a hard time figuring out which way it wants to go. Up big, down big, up big, down big, and then finishes up near the top of the trading range today. Dow has given us a clear uh, indication that it wants to support the 50. Let's see. S&P 500. Is that what I want? Also supporting at the uh, 50. The the transportation index, exactly like the Dow, use the 50 as support, and the Nasdaq. Also showing us that it doesn't want to, uh, or it's trying to come back up above the uh, 50. So there's buying going on here, obviously. Now what we have to see is how they open this market uh, tomorrow. If they can get it back up above the T line, that's pretty good evidence that the the uh, 50 is acting as support, and this upward trend channel is still in progress. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, yeah, Ruiz, you might have to reboot or go out and come back in again. All right. Nothing really affecting the uh, market outside the market itself. Crude oil has just now bounced back up to the 50-day moving average, so it'll be important to see what they do with it from here, whether they can break it through. But it looks like they're breaking this downward trend. If they fail here and do a sell signal, you still anticipate you can be shorting crude oil. The uh, bonds are just kind of a slow, steady, sideways. Nothing here either uh, to show that there's any uh, uh, any great uh, concern about interest rates, bond prices going up, interest rates going down. Gold, still on a steady downtrend. You can stay short on gold, and pretty much the same scenario with silver. Just stay short until you see a buy signal and a close above the T-line. Oh, what else do we have out there in the commodity world? Lean hogs, looks like it's wave one, wave two. We did a bullish engulfing signal off the 20 through the T-line today, trading up a little bit after hours. But a good prospect that this is a wave one, wave two, wave three, which means if this is wave one, wave three should test, uh, test the highs. Uh, cattle started jumping big time, was up the limit. Uh, uh, Friday came up strong again today, and look where we are, right at the breakout level. So they could be taking this higher. I didn't check what the uh, feeder cattle is doing. Feeder cattle coming out of this slow curve, still in a nice uptrend, but near the top of this trend channel. So watch for some profit taking. Uh, let's see, CK, uh, no sound. Huh? I don't know. All right, uh, gold, silver, dollar. Dollar index still moving up steadily. Did kind of a doji day, which is unusual to have a big up day, profit taking. Big up day, profit taking. 
still a buy, but notice they're starting to move a little bit away from the uh, T line. But as long as you stay above the three T line, you stay. You want to stay long, which means the euro still in a uh, downtrend. Yes, uh, Pat. If oh, not Pat, Larry. If you're getting stopped out, and then you see the market turning, don't be afraid to jump right back in again. There's that big ego problem of getting stopped out, and then uh, see it start moving in the direction you thought it was in the first place, and jumping back in because of the old uh, "boy would I look so stupid" syndrome. Boy, would I look stupid if I got stopped out and it went back up and I bought back in and it went right back down again. Well, do what the charts are telling you. And I'll try to get to that uh, 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 here later. That's all part of uh, using the candlestick charts to tell you when to be in or, or when to be out. Whoops, I've lost my list here. There we go. Um, uh, Joe, we'll get to that one here. We're going to get to them all. Don't worry. And see, I'm trying to think if there's any more on the commodity side that I haven't paid attention to. Coffee might be on its way back up. Coco needs to hold the uh, the T line, and sugar sugar's got a nice little chart. Notice the little kicker type signal here. That one should be coming back up to test. I don't know what this line is. Test the 50-day uh, moving average. All right. Take a look at the stocks that we're following. WTW is still moving, all based upon this gap up breakout from uh, this level. Now, do all of them work like that? Well, right now, JRJC, who also broke this downtrending channel, is trading down here somewhere uh, after hours, or maybe down here uh, after their earnings. But this is where, if you own it, uh, some, I had some people close out half their position today, not knowing which way it was planning on going. If it moved higher, they'd buy back. If it uh, traded lower, they closed out. At least they came out with uh, probably breaking even or good profits. 788, all right, thank you. It's trading down to 788. But remember, after hours trading, doesn't mean a whole lot. It's three minutes before the market opens as you're going to see what the big boys uh, have decided they're going to do. Uh, David, we'll get to that also using the five and ten minute chart. Okay, let's take a look at a few here. ANVR, this one you want to get ready to buy on positive trading. There's the obvious J-hook pattern after this big fry pan bottom. Still a good chart. H, P, J, another fry pan bottom classic. Fry pan bottom, J hook pattern. You can be buying this one on positive trading tomorrow. H, I, M, X, also in a nice steady uptrend. Uh, this one, watch to see what it does once it gets here to the uh, 200. Now, you're not anywhere close to the oversold or overbought area yet. So there's a good possibility they're going to go through. Now, what will happen if they go through with this much juice left in the stochastics is they'll bring it up, and then they'll come back and test to see whether the 200 is going to act as as a support. Uh, somebody might want to tell CK to see if his he's got his, uh, his uh, speakers turned up. 
Uh, we uh, got into AGIO today because of the obvious. Big fry pan bottom, and they broke out with a gap up right at the resistance level. This one should go much higher. How much higher? Oops, I guess it's at its highs. All you can do right now is stay long until you see a sell signal. What did you buy in as soon as it when it opened lower, as soon as it traded back up above yesterday's close, told us that they were still still coming into this one. Oh, I didn't buy or did I buy? We bought stock today in some of the bigger accounts. I don't think I bought the calls on it. Yeah, the breakout was actually back down in here. Um, but this was the confirmation which I didn't see yesterday, but this was a confirmation that told us that we're probably going much higher. And AEO, another one that's holding up well. This one you can be buying on positive trading. Obviously, wave one, wave two, kicker signal starting wave three. And blocks. Whoops, let's make this bigger. Big fry pan bottom. If this one breaks out, there's a gap here all the way up to the 200. These are the type that could run pretty strong because there's no uh, no resistance levels. Now, we uh, started looking at RPRX yesterday. We'll be buying this one on positive trading tomorrow. The doji sandwich breakout. After a gap up from a doji, your best friend, but doji sandwich would confirm that at least they're coming back up to the 50-day uh, moving average. And uh, I think I've got some more to. Now, TKMR also had a good-looking chart until it closed back below the T-line. Now, this is why knowing what our simple rules of the signals are, Simple rule of the doji is they're going to move it in the direction how they open it. They opened it lower. The last case scenario for it moving up is if it opened lower, it should immediately start trading positive, which it didn't. We close this one out. Not to say we're not going to get back in. There might be coming to this lower end of the trend channel and turning around, but we need to see that. I'd rather pay for it knowing that it's moving than trying to anticipate whether it's going to turn around and come up. Otherwise, it could be coming all the way back down to the 50-day moving average. And that also, somewhat the same scenario on Dugley, which was it needed to open positive. Well, it opened lower. We were waiting to see what it did today. Remember, it still had that gap up. Now it did a doji. So there's only one alternative tomorrow. If you don't own it, you can be buying this on positive trading. If you do own it, it has to open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower, this downward trend channel is still in progress. More than likely, they're taking it back to the 50. So you close it out uh, pretty quick. Now, some of the ones that are working are ADA. Now, I had uh, somebody say, oh, I got stopped out today. Well, when I looked at it, Here's a very simple uh, rule of thumb, and this was right up in this area. If it doesn't close back below the T-line, you stay long. Now, you might have closed out here, but you probably would have bought back in here. At this point, when you're getting this late in the day, where are you trading overall on this uh, stock at the near the end of the day? Pretty much up here at the high end of the trading range. What we didn't want to see is it closing back down here. That would tell us there's a lot of weakness, and we'd have to see it open positive. This told us there was still some good buying going on near the end of the day. Um, so there's a lot of times that based on my 10-minute chart, uh, if this one, if I hadn't gotten back in and then I started seeing near the end of the day they were coming back up above the T-line, that told me they were buying going into the close. Uh, Taz, there are all sorts of uh, thinking out there, so that's uh, uh, 
that's why you always want to kind of set up your strategy and uh, and stick with it. So there's a lot of times where I'll look at something, say, man, do I want to buy this stock up here? Do I want to buy it here? No. Do I want to buy it here? Sure do. Even though it was trading there at that same level, at least now I know they're coming up into the next wave. Does that mean it's going to go lower for the rest of the day? Don't have any idea if you cut the chart off right here. But what I do know is right now, if I'm buying on a breakout situation, I'm buying when there's still buying going on above the T-line. This one is probably going to be on the recommended list tomorrow. VICM. Make this a little bit bigger. We're sitting right here, kind of breaking out. If this opens positive tomorrow, you definitely want to be buying on wave three. EDSI is another good looking chart. This one you can be buying on positive trading. If you get positive trading tomorrow, what do you have over here? A little morning star type signal, cup and handle, probably starting a slingshot effect to the upside. You still have 10 minute charts. Well, no wonder that didn't look as intriguing as I thought. Okay. That's. BDSI. I was wondering why VIMC didn't look as wonderful there. That's more like it. Okay. There's your big fry pan bottom. There's your J-hook pattern with kind of a little scoop pattern to start you out again. So this one, uh, you definitely want to be buying on positive trading. If it's already moved from 3 to 9, at this level, it can move from 9 to, to 16. And we got CCRN. Well, shows us. S dot CCRN. Notice the kicker signal putting us into the next wave up. It's going to probably do a 45 degree off of this channel. So a lot of times, as you can see, when you have a channel consolidation, they move it up to the channel. Consolidation, they move it up to the channel. So these moves right here are usually pretty extensive because they're catching up to what where the price should be. Uh, JRJC is trading now at 788, but you still wait to see how they open this because uh, what they do right now isn't really all that important. It's an indication they're disappointed, but this is where we want to see what this doing is doing right there about five minutes before the market opens. Okay. WLDN. Another good looking chart. Just stay long. Notice the slow curve. That might be doing a little slingshot back to the outside. We'll probably put a recommendation on NQ tomorrow. Make this big enough where we can see it. Notice all the indecision. Then bam, then bam, then bam. They're starting to get less indecisive. And they're right about the breakout level. Um, you want to be buying this one on, on a strong, uh, strong move tomorrow. We were short con a while back, but then we closed it out because it was starting to show a little bit of strength down here. Now it's showing good strength. This one you can buy with the anticipation that you're heading up here. We're probably going to be working on some call strategy on this one. If we know that this area is our uh, resistance level and it could get there in the next two or three weeks, probably a more beneficial, uh, more beneficial to do a spread on this versus buying the outright calls. Uh, the one we did right before NQ was WLDN. All right, now the reason that we want to know what our chart patterns are doing is because when a chart pattern is setting up, if you see, I can cut this chart off. This chart pattern, w, Tweeter, looked like it was starting to do a J hook pattern. As we moved along, though, it failed, so we close this one out because what should this chart pattern be telling us? 
the J hook pattern's in effect, we should be breaking out, not falling back. We can always buy it back. So when we were out, it hasn't hurt us any. We haven't missed anything. But this is why you want to be able to analyze what each pattern is supposed to tell us. This was supposed to be a breakout. Now, whether it was because of the market or investor sentiment, it doesn't really matter. Investor sentiment was included in the market move the other day when it pulled back, so it didn't break out. Now, there's others. The reason we want to stick with the charts or the uh, signals and patterns is because we can tell on a pattern what we should be expecting. And AMBA, when we recommended this one, notice the doji sandwich on the J-hook. So we basically have the classic fry pan bottom, strong price move, J-hook pattern, new buying. This wave right here should be the same as this wave right here. So being able to identify what they do right here at the breakout levels is a good indication of whether that pattern is obviously working or not working, which is clearly evident in our big winner right now. Uh, G Pro, fry pan bottom, strong, strong price move. We were buying again right here and right here. Calls and stock because what was this anticipating? What, was, what should we have been anticipating? Our classic is a fry pan bottom, strong price move, J hook pattern. Where is this likely to go? Well, if this was 30 points from here, 30 points from here should take us right to 100. And there's always a simple rule of uh, uh, simple rule of numbers is when they hit a hunt or hit 90, more than likely they're going to go to 100 because that's a nice round number. Um, that's where everybody's going to wait to sell is the one that hits 100. Here's another good setup because of the Doji sandwich in the breakout area. If this one opens positive, we're heading up to test the to the recent highs. And here's your best friend and a big price move. Notice the doji gap up, big huge price move. If you start buying this, it's going to have that 45 degree off of here. Um, that's that logical conclusion after seeing a very big change of investor sentiment and coming off your best friend signal. Fuel, this is another little fry pan bottom that is just now starting to pick up some steam. Wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one because of this pattern right here with the anticipation that your first target is the uh, 50. Now, I say your first target. We know that they're probably at least going to come to the 50. Knowing that we're stochastics are heading up, we just had a buy signal, and we were coming out of a slow curve fry pan bottom type situation that they're going to hit here. If they hit here, kind of in the resistance level, if they break through this, we know we've got plenty of running room all the way back up into the $24, $25 range. So basically, we can see what is happening, and we can see where all the targets should be, and see exactly what type of trading is going to go at those, at those levels to see whether it's time to get out or to, to uh, to stay in after a breakout. And these are the breakouts that we're looking for. This is move. Notice the Harami gap up through the T line and the 50 and the 20. So we're right here at this breakout level. If they open this positive, you want to be buying. They're going to have another move, somewhat the same scenario as this, which makes this chart a good looking chart. TA broke this down trending channel on a bullish Harami, bullish confirmation. And STRZA. Notice the doji gap up. There was profit taken, and this is why we have the benefit of seeing what the investor sentiment is doing based upon the graphics. The next day, indecision. Next day, open positive. What did that tell us about this gap up? That this profit taking was over, and the gap up strength is now in progress. Wave one. Wave three in progress. Uh, let's see. TCP. Same scenario. Big move to the upside. Profit taking. And where did the profit taking end? Right here at the uh, T line. 
morning star type signal. This one you can be buying with the anticipation they're still moving this one higher. And INSY. Just uh, you can stay long on this one. This is why we use the 3T line. We'll probably be going, doing some more sessions on the 3T. Notice where this is. It's away from the T line, but it's also still above the 3T line. We're almost in the overbought area, but this is doing exactly what it should be doing coming out of this breakout area. And if this is wave one, wave three should have another two or three points to the upside. But to be safe, tomorrow you put your stop right here at the previous day's open. It shouldn't come back through there. If it is, Jonas are probably bringing it back down to the T line. It's time to be out. That was which one? NC. TGTX is one to watch because you've got your fry pan bottom. Now you've got your pullback. What are we expecting? A J-hook pattern. So if this opens positive tomorrow, you can think about starting to build up a position or uh, buying a half a position. And if it closes positive or opens positive the next day, you definitely want to uh, uh, You definitely want to be buying. I'm reading some of the stuff here. Is the 90 to 100 rule when a stock passes 90 for the first time in the stock's history or any time a stock goes up to 90? Um, yeah, I don't know, Marty. Just if they, nobody's ever explained it to me. It just seems to work that when a stock does hit 90, it will go to 100. Okay. SMCI, another big fry pan bottom, J-hook pattern. This one you can be buying. That's a good, strong chart. And I think it was BMRN that uh, David Allen pointed out. There's another nice J-hook pattern. Notice how this one started back up. Big morning star signal, smack dab off the 200, closed above the T-line, opens positive. Now we're at the breakout area. If it opens positive, if this was a, I can figure this out, 56 to 72, 16-point move, 16-point move from here should take you, take you up into about the 86, $87 range. Okay. Um, AMED, we've got on the watch list because observe the obvious. Notice when they took it up hard, and then they've just consolidated to where? Right back to the 50-day moving average. Where do you want to put a buy stop? Right up here. If it comes up through here and breaks this level, you've got the possibility of another, this, another big move. Why another big move? Because this is just like a building up of strength again getting ready to take it up to the next level. Uh, let's see. Micron. Here's a perfect example, too. When you have that gap up breakout, this is what we want to see the next day. We don't want to see a close back below this level. Now, it was a little bit scary this morning, but whenever I see something open lower, I give it a few minutes to see whether they start buying. In this case, they did. So what's this tell us? Told us this is gap up with bullish buying. This this uh, gap up strength is still in progress, especially when it broke out through this whole downward trend level. That tells us we're in a new dynamic. Um, it's time to be buying this one. That was Micron. All right, and P R G S. Pretty much the same scenario. Break out through this level, profit taking. Today told us the profit taking was over. You can be buying this one on positive trading. Probably just use now this this candle open. I wouldn't want to see it close back below that that level. It told us the bulls uh, weren't able to uh, keep control. And VHC, nothing here yet, but. Observe the obvious, kind of that little uh, rounding bottom cradle type pattern. 
If they close above the or get above the T line, there's this little gap to fill, which means they consist or they what I want to say compellingly closed above the T line, which meant they could zoom this right back up, which would be what they would call a column reversal. Where they take it down big, consolidate it for a while, and then they've got a good possibility of taking it right back up big. Why? Because even though there's trading here, there's not very much resistance. And resistance is, call, or is caused by people that that uh, uh, that buy here, and it goes down. And they say, man, if it ever gets up to where I bought it, I'm going to sell it. And that's what happens. So there's not very many buyers or sellers here, because that moves so big. But once they get back up and break out, there's no sellers in the way. They can take it right up pretty hard. Okay, uh, EXAS. Left right combo right off the 200 day moving average. You've got an uptrending channel. High probability that if they open this higher, they're going to take it to the top of the trend channel. Low risk trade. If it opens positive, you can be buying, and if it closes back below, you close it right back out again and wait for the next buy signal. <laughs> SNX doing positive or bullish confirmation, but notice what started. Kicker signal, consolidation. The kicker signal is still in effect. You can be buying this one. Look for some of these moving averages as your next target. And I've got AXDX, bullish engulfing, bullish confirmation. We're just about the breakout level. That, that usually has, a, if they open it slower, buy it if it comes back up through here, because that'll do another big day, which is the three white soldiers, which would mean there'd be more more upside to follow. And RCII, I think, did Nora say she was in this? Notice what this one has done. Fry pan bottom, breakout, little J-hook pattern with a bullish engulfing signal. And notice the trajectory of wave three, a lot faster than this wave. Now, that's not uncommon, because where do most people start buying enthusiastically? As the price keeps moving higher and higher. So wave three on this type of thing usually is a much faster move. Now, because the market still doesn't have a definite direction yet, I I'd keep looking at uh, or keep a few of the uh, short positions on your radar. Here's BRCX. If this opens lower tomorrow, you can be shorting it because you probably have a double doji sandwich to the downside, which means they're breaking this level, which means you're in a bearish J-hook. They could be taking this one down a lot lower. And CZR. Notice where this one failed. Evening star signal right here at the 50. If this one opens lower, they're probably taking it down at least to this level. And notice that you got kind of a scoop pattern setting up over here. C's was another one that we suggested a few days ago. Stay short on this. Let's make this big enough where we can see it. Because once they have the slow curve, notice what they did yesterday. Had a big up day yesterday, Friday. And then they opened lower and took it down. There's nothing here to show that there's any confirmed buying going on. Uh, sales was another one, a sale. This one is obviously in a downtrend. If it opens lower, you can still be shorting this one. Notice what it did for the last couple of days. Came right up to the T-line and failed, telling us there's still no buyers around. Um, W-I-N. Get ready to short this one. If this one trades back below this level, you can see the slow curve. Notice where this has failed from your big bearish uh, belt hold. 
it's been in a downtrend ever since. Not a fast downtrend, but now the speed might be catching up to it, taking it back down to the 200-day moving average. And FEYE can't get out of its own way. Here's another one that you can be shorting on weakness tomorrow on a double doji sandwich to the downside. An obvious downtrend, so it could come down into this range. And DWRE, same scenario. A lower open tomorrow would continue this downtrending channel, taking you probably down here in the 44 range. And King was another uh, short, another slow curve. If this was a wave one, wave two, wave three could take this down another five or six points. Somewhere down in this range. So anyways, I uh, guess that's about all we got for tonight. Still have to see what these markets do tomorrow. The T-line is still very important. The NASDAQ has to open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower and starts trading down, it's telling us this downtrending channel is still in effect. Uh, your short positions should be beefed up a little bit more. On the other hand, if they move this positive, and I don't know where the, let's see if I can bring this up. Right now, the YM, no, I've lost the YM. Well, what the heck? happen to it. No. no, I'm just goofing up here. Something terrible. Lost the YM. That's just a fine howdy-do. No help. Uh, yes, but it's still trying, the S&P is trying to bottom. You can see when they opened it each day, they've taken it up. They gapped it down a day and took it up. Stochastic's getting closer to the oversold area. All right, I don't know why I can't pull it up on my charts right now. So, uh, all right, with that, uh, are there any general questions on candlesticks? Uh, TG, uh, TX, if you bought in the morning, yes, if you buy in positive trading, it shouldn't close back below the T-line. And it shouldn't trade back below this level. Probably shouldn't even trade back below the uh, doji. But if it opened positive, let's make this big enough where we can see what we're talking about. But if this opened positive, it should be moving this direction. It shouldn't come back down here and close it out. With the market opening higher and then moving lower or opening lower and moving higher, I've been getting whipsawed a bit. Should I wait longer in this environment to determine what is happening for the day? Yes. Because uh, this is why the Japanese registers, they let the market tell you what the market's doing. As we can see right now, the market's telling us it doesn't know which way it wants to go. So uh, here is a case of uh, probably things getting stopped out today. But once it hit, this is why I want to use all the indicators we can using the uh, graphics of candlesticks. So once they hit the 50, notice what they've done. They've done a, they did a uh, bullish harami yesterday. Now they're doing a hammer signal. Stochastics are flattening out, so it really doesn't tell us whether they bottomed out yet. But it kind of tells us they don't really want to go down and they don't really want to go up, which puts us in a sideways mode. So 
that is what we're looking at. So this is what you should have in your mindset in the morning, saying, well, we don't know whether they're going up or whether they're going down. So if they take it down, close out. If you get stopped out, that's fine. But since we don't know whether they're still in this choppy mode, if they take it down and bring it back up again and you get stopped out, get ready to buy back based upon what the chart is telling you, not where you got in or where you got out, just based upon what the chart was telling you. Is there any chance of Twitter moving up? There's a chance, but right now it's not a power, power chart. There's nothing there that would tell me there's any great advantage to be in Twitter right now. That's why I'm still out of it. Now, if they did, did a big bullish candle tomorrow and closed up here, yes, that tells me there's something new going on. I'll get back into it. I'd rather, again, pay up for a stock uh, than try to catch it on a pullback, not knowing whether that pullback is a real pullback or whether it was just a temporary one. How to protect profit? Well, you can't, depending on your tra the trading method, on TKMR, oh, Pashal, can't even type right. There's some that, uh, I mean, we saw this type of action. We saw that when they pulled it back, they took it up. They still may take this back up. But there's not a way to protect yourself on one of these other than, if you're way up here and you start seeing selling, you could be coming back down here. But this one almost came all the way down and back up again on that day. So there's going to be situations, and this is why I have usually an average of 10 positions in my portfolio. There's going to be one, maybe two, that you can't tell what's happening, and you have to wait to see whether it's still in that same pattern. So sometimes you have to take losses again. You have to expect, or I expect, when I put on a trade, I've got a 30% rough, roughly uh, percent probability that I'm going to lose money on that trade. But I've got a 70% probability I'm going to make money. So if I know that and I take my 30% losses, hopefully my 70% gains are going to way, way out uh, way the uh, losses. Why don't you filter out trades where a major average is not far overhead? When do you feel it's okay to take a 5 to 10% to a moving average, assuming it's breakout versus when you pass? Based upon where it is on the uh, chart, if I see a buy signal and the 50-day moving average isn't too far above it and my stochastics are just coming out of the oversold condition, more than likely they're going to go through the 50 based upon the uh, signal, the reversal signal and the strength left in the stochastics. Now, on the other hand, if the 50-day moving average is well above where I'm buying, then that becomes my target. But if it's too close to where I'm buying, more than likely that's not the target. That's just uh, that's going to be something that just has to get through. But uh, we'll have enough juice with the stochastics being that low in the uh, on the chart. You ever sell your options and buy out further to protect some profits? I uh, didn't on AMBA, but I did on uh, uh, GPRO today. I sold half the uh, position right near the close. And then what I'll do tomorrow is see what it does. And now, because it's moved up so much and it's way up in the overbought condition, I guess we can actually look at it instead of talking about it. Because it's probably getting close to this range, it might go higher, but I'll close out and take profits on my raw uh, option trades. I hate that thing. And then maybe I'll do a spread up here where I've got less risk, less movement to make uh, uh, the last remaining bit of money up in that part. You mentioned 433. 433. I don't know what 433 was. My stochastics are 1233. John, uh, try that one again. Breakout levels, how precise are they? What is the actual breakout level 
that needs to be crossed on the NQ chart. Well, the breakout level is where you obviously can see that everybody else can obviously see is a resistance level. So if I can see this right in here is where they peaked out a couple of times, that to me is kind of my breakout level, that if it can get through there, they've got a lot of running room. Where's my next target? Well, they're going to test this level, and then they're going to come up and fill this gap. So there's a good percentage move to the upside. But a resistance level is anything that you can kind of, let's make this smaller. I mean, to me, this is a resistance level. Uh, but we can also see, uh oh, I lost the stochastics. Uh, this is not going to be good. Oh, I lost the stochastics. But the stochastics just starting to turn up, and we're getting near little breakout levels. I'm a buyer on the basis that here's our next target. So anything that I can see where other people are watching, uh, and what's telling us that there's a lot of buying coming in here? Obviously, a big bullish engulfing signal, and then a bullish Harami confirmed, breaking, uh, just getting near a breakout level. That's yeah, tweeters mediocre. Trades below the open of the prior day selling. Let's see. Yeah, there's just, as, as you can see, it's in an uptrend, but there's nothing there right now. It might be in four days from now. Rather enter tomorrow on positive trading. Yes, you've got a little bit of a risk factor here uh, at this point because it's had a big price move. But notice where the big price move has come from, a lot, bunch of dojis. And this is where you kind of observe the obvious. The obvious is this was a nothing stock for months. How many months? A do not know. Bunch of months. This was a nothing stock. Then bam, something's come into it. Then there's profit taking. So, I mean, that's about as simple an explanation as you're going to get. Bam, something's happened. And so the buyers are in here for some reason. Whatever that reason is, we want to be buying based upon what the charts are telling us. A Netflix, yes, there's nothing there. So whenever you have a chart where there's nothing there, just move away from it. If you're in it, get out of it. Because that money is either going to sit dead or what's your risk factor at this point? Which way is this stock going to go? Right now we don't know whether it's going to go this way, this way, or this way. We're trying to find the ones that give us a good probability of knowing if it opens positive, it's going this way. So. If this one opened lower tomorrow, I would definitely be out of it and wait until the next buy signal in this one. But there's too many other good stocks out there to to uh, sit in something that's moving sideways. Okay, thank you, Ed. All right. We'll get to the individual ones here in a minute. What drives your decision to buy outright stocks versus buying options. Uh, number one, it's uh, the uh, the nature of the account. The bigger accounts don't really want to play with options. They want the stock positions. The smaller accounts like, uh, like trading options. In my little trading account, I'm usually trading options or commodities. Um, so it's a more of a function of the what type of trader you are. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, these are each individual stocks. Uh, so, Jim, let's go ahead and do the double line. And. Do the other double line. Jim, did you do a double line? Oh, there you are. I missed the double line. All right. Okay, Alcoa. 
nothing here that would get me excited at this point. Uh, number one, we can see which direction is going, kind of sideways. I wouldn't, if I was, if fine, uh, and I wouldn't get in until I saw it close above the T line. Yahoo, not Yahoo, Yahoo. Yahoo, you can be buying this one if it opens positive tomorrow, the J-hook fake pattern. Hershey, Hershey, uh, you can be buying this one on positive trading. Just be aware that your rate of return is very low uh, on Hershey, an institutional stock. LNG, another one you could be buying on positive trading, getting back up above the T-line after the kind of little morning star signal today. And ACTC, uh-oh, Sam, 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 whoops, CPE, this one you can be buying, just be cognizant of the fact that you've got a downtrending channel and the 50 to get through. If you're buying you just be a little bit more diligent as far as watching what type of signal you get here and here. Let me try ACTC just in case I made a mistake. No, I don't think I did. Sears holding. Trying to bottom. Wouldn't be buying it, though, until I saw it close above the T-line. And VJet. VJet made us a lot of money earlier. You can stay short on this one. Just be careful. You're already in the oversold uh, area, and you have a little inverted hammer doji. So that makes it very simple. If they open positive and trade above the T-line, you definitely want to be out of your uh, short position and then start watching to see if it's uh, time to go long. HPJ, you get uh, ready to buy this on positive trading tomorrow. Best Buy. You can be buying this one, also uh, institutional type trader, but gets good movement. You can be buying this one on positive trading, confirming today's bullish engulfing signal that closed right at the T-line. GNC, stay short. More than likely, they're bringing it back down to the, uh, the T-line. Mobley. Mobley, you can buy this one on the J-hook pattern on, on positive trading. RBIT, yeah. S-G-E-N, stay short on this one. You could be going short on this one uh, on weakness tomorrow. And MSD. This one you can stay short, especially with a gap down uh, over the last couple of days. Talk about how you use the five and ten minute charts. All right, today, uh, let's see. Usually I use the five and ten minute chart to make uh, decisions of whether to get in or out of a trade. Notice how big we were moving today on uh, G Pro. Right near the close, I came to my ten minute chart. It was just starting to roll over. Um, so notice how it was up good during the day, and then it started selling off, but then came back up above the 10-minute chart. The only reason I took profits up here, and this is probably not a good example, um, if I took profits here, I would have been buying back uh, on the 10-minute chart. But this was a case where this was a pullback, I just gave it a little more time. If they had done the start of the third candle to the downside, I would have probably closed out the position. Uh, I'm trying to think of some others that, uh, oh, let's see, for RADA. RADA, I watched the 10-minute chart. Was it time to buy here on this pullback? Well, they couldn't get below the T-line. Yes, you could be buying. Was it time to sell here? You could take profits. 
the whole overall gist of this uh, trade today was that this market or this stock price was up big. It really didn't move too far away from the upper end of the trading range. Uh, call for Ed. We'll do a whole session on the uh, the the ten minute, five minute, ten minute um, T line, three T line combination here in the next. Uh, uh, I'll try to schedule it in in the next week or so. That's the uh, T line again is our kind of our top indicator. Probably, well, again, for those of you that saw John Bollinger on our session here, uh, that's quite a few months ago now. He uh, he even said that he the Bollinger Bands only told you where you were. It wasn't a indicator of when to get in or get out. Through the can't imagine how many 30 some odd years I've been using candlesticks now finding in the T line has just dramatically improved my profitability keeping me in uh, keeping me from getting scared out of position when there's a sell signal but didn't close below the T line WTW all you can do here is stay long until you see a sell signal um, SLCA Kind of did a double top up here. Wouldn't be buying this one until it comes up above the T line. And if I was short, I'd want to see this open lower, staying below the 50 tomorrow uh, to stay short. XRS had some indication of moving out, but this is exactly why when you see a pattern start to develop and it fizzles, close it out. That means the pattern obviously has fizzled. I wouldn't be back in this one yet until I saw another strong move back up above the resistance level. An EMES. Kind of a little bullish engulfing. You could be buying this one on positive trading, especially if it gets up through the 50. That's your uh, last uh, resistance level. I'm guessing you want S U F S. Um, stay short on this one. Notice the little double top. Notice the failure back below the T-line. More than likely, they're coming back down here. But as you can see, the overall gist of this market trend is down. And it got to the 50 and did a double top, failed twice. Tells me they're still taking this one down. Let's see. DWA, I think, was uh, uh, selling off pretty hard after hours. I thought it saw it back down in this range somewhere. So if you're going to buy this one, I would probably use this area. If it opens lower, if it comes back up through that, you want to be buying that to tell you that the bulls or the profit taking is over, the bulls will step back in. And here's another one, not uh, real clean because there's no real signal down here. This, this I'd be less apt to buy for the specific reason of the lack of a signal is that Always telling us that this is, might be moving up, but it, if this if this had any force to it, the Japanese rice traders over 400 years would have identified it and told us what to look out for. But they don't acknowledge this. That means there's not enough uh, uh, statistical results to to want to go after it, especially when there's many others that uh, are probably better situations. ESPR, another one that uh, obviously broke out of the fry pan bottom. Now, you got some consolidation. I'd put my buy stop right here. If they come back up through there, the uh, profit taking's over. Uh, you can get right back into it again. What was that one? That was ESPR. Oh, did I skip Ryman? This one is in this. Oh, and this this was I had a star on this one. Notice the handle. Notice the J-hook pattern setting up. Not the J-hook, the scoop. Notice the doji sandwich with a gap up. This tells me they're at least coming up to here, and if they break through the 50, which is this handle, you got a good slingshot effect to the upside. First target, one gap right here, another gap right here. I can't tell if there's a wee little teeny gap. Maybe not up there. But look for the slingshot effect out of the scoop pattern. And finish line 
Finish line uh, wouldn't be long or short on this one right now. We were looking at this one to go short, but it popped up, didn't execute the other day. Right now, I wouldn't be long or short. There's nothing here that tells us any compelling story one way or the other. And ATHM, right now, um, I'd give it one more day. You've got the doji. Notice the doji failed up here at the T line today. Your stochastics are out of the oversold area. This one's very simple. It's going to move in the direction of how they open this one tomorrow. So if they open it lower, you stay short. Uh, you guys, you can buy this one on positive trading tomorrow also, breaking out with a little gap up, breaking out through this resistance level. And UVXY, same scenario. You can be buying this one on positive trading tomorrow. E EXC. Another one's got a steady uptrend. If you got stopped out in the last couple of days, be ready to buy this back on positive trading tomorrow with the morning star signal. ACAD, stay short till you see a buy signal. And CMG, this one I wouldn't be long or short. As you can see, there's been no direction on this now for three months, two months. Still no direction. I'd be someplace else. I into it. Stay long as long as it stays above the T line. Just be aware of a lack of magnitude of move. Rig. Oh. Rig. Another one where you just stay short until you see a buy signal and a close above the T line. Facebook, stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. I think we did IMGN, didn't we? You can be buying this one, but it needs to break out through this, this level. Um, you need to see positive trading on this one tomorrow. Not a real exciting chart. Beav. Oh, let's see. Oops, hold on. Technical. B, okay. Was a possible doji sandwich, but gapped lower. Then rose to the VK line. I was short and exited. What should I have done? Uh... If you were short and exited, you're, yeah, as you can see, there was strength coming into it. It needed to open lower and trade lower today. So apparently it didn't. So you did the right thing. I wouldn't be long or short this one right now. There's just not enough enthusiasm to the downside anymore. New skin. I better make this big enough where we can. New skin needs to break out through this level. You stay long as long as it stays above the T-line, but it needs to break here pretty soon or you're going to run out of your strength and your stochastics. WLT, another one where you stay short, or you can't stay short. If you were short, you stay short. Uh, you don't buy this until it comes up above the T-line. WLL, get ready to buy this one if you're a long-term investor. This is a good place to be buying, especially if it opens positive, because if you notice what the whole chart has done, pretty much a nice steady uptrend pullback, uptrend pullback, uptrend pullback, uptrend 
lower than the pullbacks, but you're still in this basic trend channel. Uh, still would anticipate this one could get back up to the uh, $100 range eventually. And Goog, Goog, uh, you're probably at the lower end of the trend channel. This would be an important one to watch to see uh, what happens if they start taking this back up. If they do, they're going to take it to the top of the trend channel. If they start taking it to the top of the trend channel, it means the market's acting stronger or it's acting stronger, which makes the market act stronger. Z out uh, TQ, nothing here until you do get above back up above the T line. Not a real signal here uh, as of yet. And uh, Ford got whacked today, but we're watching Ford because of the uh, acceleration to the downside. Where do you, they usually sell? They sell at the bottom. Start watching for buy signals to show up in here. Southwest. Southwest needs to get back up above the T line. Wouldn't do anything with it until it does. K P T I. Uh, uh, it wouldn't be long or short this one. There's nothing there to get you excited one way or the other. Blackberry. Another one that you don't do anything with until it does get back up above the T line. You do have a piercing signal. But you're not in the oversold area. Uh, I wouldn't. I'd be out of this. I wouldn't be back. Obviously, you'd be out of it over here. But you wouldn't be back in it until it does close back up above the T line. Pixel works. Nothing. I'd be trading someplace else. And DYAX. Still on a slow, steady uptrend. All you can do is stay long on this one until you see a sell signal. And rally. Rally you can uh, start taking a little gander at. Again, a slow curve with a strong move. Uh, I'd start looking at this one on positive trading. Did AMGN. Or did we? This one needs to, nothing here yet until it gets back up above the T line. RSTP. That's a good little gap up off of bullish engulfing. This one you can be buying. Just be aware of what it does once it gets to the 50. An ANAC. This one also get ready to buy in positive trading after the bullish engulfing. Whoops. Russia. Uh, nothing here until it gets up above the T line, but you got this belt hold type signal. Um, But it, you don't want to do anything until it does get up above the T-line. IPG, same scenario. As you can see, it's obviously supporting here at the 200-day moving average, but it's not time to buy until it comes back uh, up through the T-line. Okay, did we get most of them? A few more. We'll do S PLS staples stay short. Look for it to go to the 50. DLPH. You stay short. I wouldn't short it down here. You just stay short. This one's a pretty chart as soon as it failed, especially if it failed the downtrending channel. Uh, just makes it very simple. You stay short until you see a buy signal. Now, 
The reason I would see stay short until I see a confirmed buy signal is notice how far away you are from the T line. The further away you move from the T line and you see a buy signal, the higher the probability they're going to at least bounce it back up to that level. GDX, stay short, nothing here. Slumberger, Slumberger trying to bottom, but the rate of return on Slumberger is just so small, I wouldn't be trading this one at all. And LVS, stay short as long as they, uh, uh, this was that false little almost kicker signal. That's why when it's a kicker type signal, you got to give it less credibility than a kicker signal. This one you obviously stay short until you see a buy signal. USO, you can be buying this one, especially if it opens up above the 50. You say when a stock opens higher, do you mean the actual open or 10 minutes later? I have seen so many times the stocks reverse in the first hour. Um, Lou, my opening positive means it's probably trading near or hopefully above the previous day's close. And once it opens, Watch it for a few minutes. I don't need to jump in or nobody needs to jump in right on the open. You want to see it open and then see which way it's actually uh, moving from there. If it opens and then immediately starts trading down, obviously you don't want to get into it yet. But if it opens and starts trading down, very simple. You put your buy stop at the open because if it comes back up through there, that tells you whatever quick profit taking is over and it's still confirming the hopefully the bullish signal you saw yesterday. So my open is anywhere from 30 seconds to 10 minutes after the uh, it opens. It all depends on what the market conditions, what the stock's actually doing. ACTC. S. ACTC. That's ah, not coming up on this this one. We did. Uh, why then you can get ready to buy this one again. And TLT, stay long on this one. Okay. Uh, let's see. Bidu. Bidu has not had anything worthwhile for a while. It still wouldn't be long or short. And Scotty. Scotty, get ready to short this one if it opens lower tomorrow. Uh, yes. Um, Ed, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Ed. Okay, let's see. All right, a few more, and we'll call it a night. Fold, don't do anything with this until you see it close above the T-line. Our XII, nothing here until you close above the T-line. And Gale, nothing here until you see it close above the T-line. Your B chart looks different than mine. All right. I can't change it. Belt hold on Goog. Not really a belt hold. Nah. A belt hold is something that you can see that would be significant. 
and this one really isn't significant. This is just kind of the trading range. However, it's significant in the fact that it opened right here on probably the bottom of this trend channel and traded positive from there. Would you expect Ford to retrace back to possibly start a new base? Oh. Now we've got right down into this this trading area. Did they come out with earnings or something that knocked them down so much? Let's see. Very few decent looking stocks in this market. Just a handful so far. Uh, Taz, that's pretty much true, except I only want a handful of stocks. So that's the whole point of being able to do candlestick scanning is to get to the ones that actually look good. So right now, if I've got 10 positions on, I know this one is working. I know this one is working. I know this one is probably going to be working. I know this one is working. That's HIMX. I know AGIO is working. I know AMBA is working. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Whoops, didn't want to do that either. AMBA is working. G Pro is working. And there's a bunch more that uh, can be bought. RYAM looks like a nice scoop pattern. BIMC looks like a nice J hook pattern. NQ looks like it's about ready to break out in a new territory. So with that many right there, that's more than my account can hold. So I can find enough good positive charts to uh, right now be buying. And if I wanted to add some more short positions, there's plenty of those out there also. So there's 7,800 trading entities out there. I'm only concerned about having 10, 12, 14 that I'm interested in, and we've got many more than that on the buy side and many more than that on the sell side. So it, it doesn't matter how many there are. We just want to find the ones that actually work. Oops, go <laughs> leader. Co-leaders of the um, poor guidance on Ford. All right, that's surprising. I thought Ford was acting pretty well. Okay, let's call it a night. We'll see everybody in the chat rooms tomorrow.